I'm Marisa from Oz Off Grid Living and we're here with Wayne from Combi Clamp. Wayne, how are you today? Uh, great, thanks Marisa. Fantastic. So we're going to talk today about your Combi Clamp. Yes. Which is a fantastic sheep handling contraption yeah, that you've device. created and developed. Yeah. Device. It's Tell quite, us about it. It's quite a simple device. Mm -hmm. um, there's no compressed air, there's no generators, there's no real bells and whistles or huge amounts of technology at all. It's all about leverage and uh, it's a nice simple way of handling sheep in a quiet manner, <laughs> quite relaxed manner for you the operator mm -hmm. and say me the sheep. <laughs> okay. 17 years ago I built the first one for myself um, and it's worked out to be quite a, uh, a good idea and it was only through being forced into it by friends and family that believed in the product. It's a success story that started out from something little. It's back to basics, it really is. Um, and now we're selling them worldwide. In the UK, they love it because it's simple, it's simplicity. So would you say that's a big point of difference that these can be handled by, these can be used rather by the, your rank amateur oh, yeah, yeah. sheep Look, farmer? My nieces and nephews are townies and, and if they come out to the farm for the weekend they can jump on the combi clamp, I can leave them to drench sheep while I go away and get them. Mm. I would never put them into a drenching race and say, here you go, jump in there and drench them. I'd come back, they'd be lying on the ground flattened, okay? I mean, yeah, no, yeah nothing against Tianis. I am a farmer myself, but <laughs> I, like, I wouldn't put somebody in that position, but on a combi clamp, that's fine. Mm. And so what are you, so apart from that, what are you, some of the other major points of difference? The, the, dif the difference is price, okay, we're $6,400 plus GST, that's, that's entry level with a standard unit. Um, we go out to about $9,000. Now, comparing it against a pneumatic machine that's got lots of bells and whistles, computers and chips, and you put all that in with a mob of sheep, you yeah, it's a recipe for disaster. Mm. Well, well, things can go wrong. Mm. Now, with a combi clamp, because there's no computers, no nothing, if something should go wrong, you may have to weld something up, but it's, it's, it's not a life or death situation, mm. okay? Um, so, but there's also the other side of the coin. Pneumatic machines are quite sudden, quite, I we'll call it angry machines. They give sheep a fright. Whereas if you've got sheep that don't mind the experience, so we catch them nice and so softly. We've got rubber moulded walls so as that there's no pressure points or anything like that. So that means that the sheep don't mind, so they don't mind coming back through again. If you can work it nice and quietly and give them a sort of a warm fuzzy feeling about it, mm. um, without rolling them over on off their feet, we do not roll the sheep over, we can still trim feet, we can still crutch our sheep, we can do anything we like, okay? But the last thing I want to do is tip a sheep on its side, because what actually happens is the first thing a sheep will do is kick. And then you start getting danger zones with flying sharp feet. Can they be incorporated into existing yards, pre-existing yards? Of course they can. There's, there's, races, there's, there's, there's lots of ways of doing it. You may prefer to uh, look at a set of quarter curves, which can, which the sheep, with the sheep flowing around you, gives you a tighter working area, but the sheep have to move around a longer, a longer race. So it gives you plenty of time to work the handler. Um, here. Is it mobile Wayne? There's two options here. You can go for a, a more inexpensive set of wheels but aren't road legal. Okay, you can tow behind your quad bike or whatever around the paddock so you can take the product or the machine to the sheep. Or there are the other option of uh, a ground lowering trailer. It's all set up on it. You've got a nice roof for shade. Hang all your bells and whistles, your drenches, your vaccinating packs. All of that's all there. Um, that is is at an added cost, but for somebody um, that may be wanting to say hire it out to other other lifestyle block people is, that can't afford a lot of money, maybe there's, a, there's an opportunity for that. You were also saying before that uh, customers can call you at any time if they've oh, purchased yeah, a unit yeah. or... Look, we've, got a, we've got a 1-800 number, <laughs> yeah. I mean primarily that's for you as a client, if you've got one if you're scratching your head about something, mm. 
Ring me. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, ring me, tell me how you're getting on. If you've got any issues or something, usually that can be solved over the phone, mm -hmm. okay? I'm, a, I'm in Australia for eight months of the year. Um, I'm always in contact, I always answer my phone. Right, what we've got here is some sheep that are here at a field day. Um, they have been around a few times, so this is what happens when you've got sheep that have been through a combi clamp <laughs> quite a bit. So we've got the machine unlocked. All I've got to do is open up the clamp and as they come in, so it's my body weight. Yep, so it's my body weight. So to open and close it, that's all it is, okay? So we can get in here, we can do our drenching, our vaccinating, fingers under the jaw, come in with your vaccinating needle and straight in behind the ear. It's nice and safe. You cannot get, you get to yourself with a needle. So no more, no more needles in the hand. You can mouth, we can draft. Jump out. Nah, nah, look, I tell you what, the combi clamp here, because I'm here working the sheep, and I'm here, very rarely do you miss one. If you miss one, it's usually inattention. It's nice and quiet. We're not slamming it. If one's going a bit fast and you've got to catch it in a hurry, yes, you will slam it, but um, you can't hurt them because it's rubber behind. That wall there has got soft rubber behind it, okay? So that means that if you do launch onto here, like Swan Lake, Swan Dive onto here, you're not going to hurt them, okay? If we want to get in to do feet or, or crutch sheep, we can shut that gate there. I grab my handpiece. Get in there and tidy them up, okay? Then we open the gate. Let it go, the next one comes in, catch it early and then ease it in to the right position, okay? Nice and easy. Now when, we, when we're starting to talk about trimming feet, we shut the gate again. I catch them in about the middle. I've locked that in, that's that lever that will lock that rail in so as it can't open up and let the sheep out, okay? So that's all that action is, okay? Now that's locked there. There is a little bit of noise there, but that's minimal. Now, if I'm wanting to trim feet, I put my leg up here, grab the leg, put it over here, okay? If they kick, I actually let the leg go, because that'll stop them, it'll settle them down. It's only when you hold the leg tight that they will actually fight and try and get away. So you can deal with the foot, push it off, grab the next one, there, and then you can trim that. It's a fallacy that you've got to turn a sheep over to trim their feet. It's only because of, I don't know, history, our grandparents used to tip sheep over to trim their feet, and that's why people still think you've got to do it today. It is wrong. Um, sheep are a lot happier. Right, so we can open that up. We've taken this wing out. and then I can pull that foot out here and deal with it. There's, now sheep, as far as strength goes, they've got 80% of their strength in their rear foot. They've only got about 20% here. I can hold a mixed age ram with one finger. Okay, good access to the front. You can do blood testing, um, anything you like. That sheep's not fighting. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the most common comment when I get on-farm demonstrations. They can't believe how quiet their sheep are. Have I sedated them? No. It's because we're not treating them, you know, bad. We're treating them with respect the way we're handling them. Yeah. Makes a big difference. For figuring out what you want, if you're not wanting to draft, let's say you don't require the three-way draft, which is from here on, what we've got is the standard unit, which is the clamp that holds onto the sheep and the approach race here. So from where they leave the ground through to here is what we call the standard unit. Now the standard unit is $6,400 plus GST, um, and that is landed in any main centre 
in the eastern states. Okay, the price does go up gradually, whether you sell uh, Adelaide or Perth, but only an extra two hundred dollars to Adelaide, and another hundred dollars on top of that to get to Perth. Once again, this is why we manufacture in New Zealand. The international freight to the main centres is actually very cheap, so it's available at a fair price for everybody. The three-way draft is from here down to the ground. This gives us the ability to have two gates, um, which gives us three ways of drafting. They also come with extension handles here, so as that the gates can be operated from the rear, so you're not having to walk down here to move the gates all the time. This is $1,100, okay? Good access into the head should you need to get in there. And, of course, connection points at the end here to put on, hook on portable yards, okay? These connections here. The, the, the anti-jump rails here on the standard unit, uh, this one is always set in the forward position, okay? Doesn't matter what job you're doing. If we are working at the head of the sheet, what we tend to do, if we're not working at the rear of the sheet, we tend to shift these up here. What that does, it forms a tunnel for those sheep that are the weary sheep, the ones that are, that they're weary the first couple of times they go through because it wasn't here yesterday. So what we've got to do is, is make it so it's a nice pleasant experience, but we want, don't want them to learn to get out, so this is why we have these anti-jump rails. And they come as standard? As the standard with a standard unit, yep. From where they, where they leave the ground back here, where, the, where there's a hock rail in here, um, the hock rail means that the sheep will jump over it, but they, they won't back out. So this gives us the ability to, for them to sit there and wait their turn. And then the trick with a combi clamp is don't let the sheep out that you've processed in the clamp unless this gate's open. Or even go a little bit further, make sure that Daisy here is looking at Petal before Petal jumps out. And these, um... Oh, the curved races, that's it. Um, yeah, they are also available um, in quarter, a quarter curve or a half circle. Quarter curve is usually more than enough. This one is a quarter. That is a quarter. Now, I know you're recording it there. They're only set up to curve that way for the purpose of the show, so as we can, the public can get in and operate the handler. Uh, in the real world, out at home, what I would be doing is having the curves going around us, being the operator, so that we're on the inside of the circle, like I mentioned earlier, um, so as that the sheep are walking around us. It makes it easier to operate. This, this standard unit is actually set up for a right-handed operator, meaning a right-handed dagger or crutcher. Um, now, we manufacture them all identical, like batches of 20 at a time. They can all go out to left-handers or all go out to right-handers because all we've got to do is hook this race on the other end for the sheep to be coming towards you. And all of a sudden, it's a left-handed machine. These gates and this wall here are interchangeable. Because if this race swung around there, these gates would be on the wrong side. So that's why everything has been designed to be able to be either left or right-handed. Some people just prefer to be on the other side of the sheet for certain jobs. Now the secret to the combi clamp is, which I failed to uh, talk about earlier, is the fact that we can deal with ewes and lambs undrafted. Okay, so mum and the kids. Okay all go through here and the main reason for that is the fact that the pivot point is right down at ground level so the whole wall moves in and out so this we've got huge that whole wall moves in and out so that means that we can catch the ewes here and the lambs down here um, very simple weighing them we can actually tear ourselves out here on the clamp and then when we let our sheep in we can weigh them, but because we're teared out on, I can still handle the sheep, check their condition, their teeth, their age, without affecting the weight of the, of the animal. So the load bars go underneath here. We've also got stands, which it's an optional extra, what we call the load bar fittings, okay? 
So that's another five hundred and ninety-five dollars. So what you do is you get the stands here to support this because otherwise it would fall to the ground because we cannot have it hooked into here because otherwise that race is affecting the weight. So we've got to get this, the combi clamp, the clamp itself, totally independent of the race. Talking about throughput, now this will, will depend on your skill, whether you're a full-time farmer or a part-time farmer. It doesn't really matter, anybody can use a combi clamp. Uh, it's, it, the idea of being outside of the pen from the sheep means that you're not in there getting bashed around, um, two, you're out here, you're in control, any skill level can operate it. So uh, an experienced operator could do it, drench anything between six to seven hundred an hour, some of them are doing more, okay, um, you know, drenching lambs. But some people buy them for ease rather than speed, okay. The older generation are not buying them for speed, they're buying them for ease, simplicity, got gammy legs or whatever like that, um, it means that they can still farm, okay? Then you get the other side of the coin, the young fellas. Six foot tall and bulletproof, things have got to be done at a million miles an hour. They can still achieve that, still be faster than traditional means up a drenching race. A drenching race, top end, 600 an hour, say. But then if you're dealing with ewes, the adult sheep, I could only ever do 400 an hour per race. Um, I've got 60, 70 year old clients that are comfortably drenching 500 an hour on use. Now that's, that's just, that's, that's with your jersey on, okay? There's no physical strength required. All you need is a bit of weight, okay? Now in saying that, we've got, we've got pressure adjustment for different weighted operators, okay? So if you're a heavy operator, Quite a bit heavier than your sheep we can actually adjust the pivot point which by bringing it closer to the pressure plate we're only standing here means that it's minimizing the weight on the big rubber wall so that means if you're really heavy don't worry you're not going to squeeze the life out of them and then on the other side of the coin if you're light like Lindley and you've got a, a great big ram at 150 kilos we can always give Lindley a little bit more leverage by shifting that pivot point further away, give me a long enough lever and I'll move the world, okay? It's simple, it's, it's just physics. I never passed it at school anyway, so. So how many, how many sheep tops maximum speed? Oh, just depending on the job. I mean, if you're, if you're drenching, I've got clients that I know that are doing 800 an hour, they've got five combi clamps now, they're in Tasmania. So, um, and then you've got, and then you've got the other side of the coin, the, the crutching. We've got, I've got an 80 year old that still crutches 80 an hour. He's as happy as a sandboy. If I was 80 an hour, there's other things that I'd want to do, okay? <laughs> um, if I can't put out like real cruisy and dirty sheep, it should be about 150 an hour. There's clients that are doing four to 500 with only taking a little weeny bit off the bottom. Just a little bang, okay? You can work it on your own. Um, it's not necessary to have somebody chasing up for you, especially if you've got the curved race and a good dog. Right, so what we've got is the, what we call the combi trailer. Now this is a ground lowering trailer. So at present it's lying on the ground. Um, it has got suspension, it is road legal. Um, you can reg register it. it. To my knowledge it is actually the only road legal trailer. Um, that is on the market uh, in Australia. Now, when the winch that's on the front there, what that does to get into traveling mode, that winch pulls the roof down. In turn, it pushes that, that swing arm and the wheels go down, hence the whole thing comes off the ground. Now, once again, this is another product from Combi Clamp with no electronics, no hydraulics, because I don't, the last thing I want is to have people with stock in the yards, their machine doesn't work, there's animals in there being stressed because they're in the yards, um, long time off feed while something's being fixed. With a combi clamp, you don't get any of that, okay? Um, so, no, it's, it's I'm something I'm quite proud of. Our, our standard unit and our three-way draft is fitted onto that trailer with scales. 
Uh, it has hitch points for hanging your crutching plant and your vaccinations and your indicator as you can see under the roof there. We've removed the, the, the scales indicator, hooked that up on the roof and now we're all set to winch the roof down in which it'll push the wheels down. Now this is something that I'm, yeah it's awesome. <laughs> it's, there's a lot of years of development of getting this mechanism to work. Yeah. Because we've, we're, we're working on these, these straps, they're, they're two and a half ton. They're more than, more than enough because there's some on both sides of the trailer. Just in case there should be any sort of damage or wear, we put this pin on here just to be on the safe side. It doesn't matter what sort of terrain. Uh, it's all that you're driving on. It's fine. Standard suspension. You can, if you need to replace a leaf spring, you can buy them off the shelf, there's nothing special about them. It is a 750 kilo uh, rated trailer, so it's under the 750. You, I know in Victoria you can actually register this, um, you know, just online, it doesn't have to be taken in. Now, what there is, is there's a strop that goes from this, this point, hitch point here, goes across here and over the top, okay? I just wonder where that is, actually. So, yeah, so the hook's over here, so that means it can't slide backwards and it can't slide forwards, so it travels there. So once we get to the property, all we do is we remove the strop that would be over here, let the roof down, we've just got to get that bit there up to the front. The reason why it's on the back here is one, because of ballast, because the weight of the roof has gone to the drawbar. Um, and two, when the roof comes down, there's no room for the draft up there. So the trailer, the standard unit, and the three-way draft is $15,450. Because these are huge and we can't air freight them, okay, well we could, but I'm not prepared to pay the freight, um, uh, they are containerized when they come over, so that's why they are ex -Sananid. So this is why we struggled to sell these in WA because of the freight from Sananad. Hi, I'm Marisa with Oz Off Grid Living and we're talking to Wayne and Lindley from Combi Clamp. So that's the name of the business and your website is combiclamp.com.co.nz .co of course it is. <laughs> that's combiclamp.co.nz and Lindley, how's this whole journey been for you? Um, well, it started out just producing something that we wanted to make our own life easier. And um, our chap that we were working for said, well, you better get a painting on this thing. It's neighbours wanted them. And then we got the local engineer to make a couple for us. And a few years later, we got enough money to borrow our own farm. We're now so busy, so full time doing this, we've now gone full circle, sold the farm, and oh. which is pretty sad. Yeah, and, I know, um, it is. Travelling, doing lots of travelling, and just visiting farmers, New Zealand, Australia. We've been to UK, Ireland, um, and done lots of travelling, meeting lots of people, and just basically wow. helping lots of people solve yeah. the sheep handling issues. And how do you like it? Do you like? I love the trip, and I really miss the farm. Um, it's taken me really out of my comfort zone. Um, I'm not a, was never a talker, but I find it easy because I'm talking to like-minded people. I'm, I reckon I'm pretty good at at dealing with sheep. Uh, I've done it all my life. It's what I live for, and so I can easily explain how to do things to to the farmers and help them. And I understand their situations I've been in because half of them I've been in myself. Mm. Um, and yeah. did you have a fair amount of input into the the original, the initial design? Um, the initial no, Wayne's a clever one there. <laughs> but I, I've always put my two bob in and, and suggested this or that, and just basically been the helper along the way. But I'm probably the one who's appreciated the product the most because. Um, as you know, I love farming, but with severe back injuries I've had in the past, I actually lost the strength of being able to do any physical work, and this has basically given me my life back, so much so that 
I actually ran the farm completely on my own for three years while Wayne was travelling. Wow, even with serious back injuries. Yeah, because I don't have any worries now. I can work all day on stock and feel fine and go home. Wow. Cook cook dinner, tend to the children and um, and, and do... um, stay in the office until midnight and doing office work and ready to do all That's again the next day. Thank you very much. No worries. Yeah. Once again, if you'd like more information or great instructional videos about the Combi Clamp and the various products produced by Combi Clamp, again, you can go to combiclamp.co.nz and the links will be available on Oz Off Grid Living.